Troy Corsa, double world superbike champion. You've heard of him, right? Funnily enough, he knows a thing or two not only about how to ride a bike fast, but how to keep your skills sharp and stay fit. So who better to run an off-road riding course than a man who made a career from transferring his off-road skills to road racing? I'm riding through all the frozen fields at dawn There's lazy days where daisies lay on lawns Troy's masterclass is run at Wildon Off-Road Centre in Devon, a West Country bastion of off-roady goodness. Troy, tell us what we do here. Well, you know, here at the off-road centre, um, you know, we pretty much start people on like uh, body position and feet position and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, we've got all different levels of riders. Yeah. So we assess everybody indoors first, see what group they're in, uh, put them in their groups, same speed as the other riders, and uh, uh, basically just teach them basi the basics first, and then let them learn themselves. And uh, you know, we're getting really good results with it. The road guys, they unbelievably improve so much. So. Uh, I think the road guys are going to benefit hugely out of this and uh, not just off-road but when they get back on the road bike. Yeah, you know, the indoor uh, track is probably our, our major feature you know, because obviously if the weather's not good we ride in there all day. An indoor motocross track. No longer are us poor riders at the mercy of daylight and the British weather. A lot of riders look the same in here, but when you time them, you know, like somebody, and all of a sudden he comes up top of the list with, and he's like a second and a half, two seconds that quicker, and he's cruising, yeah. and and it's because he's in a higher gear and he's just carrying the speed around the corners, and it doesn't look very good, but, but he's going good. faster. And these conditions are nice, whereas yeah. if it was slippery, you'd actually want to keep it singing, so you might need to go down a gear. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's sort of, you know. It's, it's hard, you know, and if you're getting tired, always go up a gear because you actually, you don't realise it, but you go nearly the same speed cruising with less effort. Rather with less effort. We've got an outdoor circuit, uh, natural terrain, side of a hill, very tricky, especially when it's wet. Uh, and we've got a few different trial sections as well, some technical areas and stuff to teach slow balance and stuff. So we pretty much can cover everything here. So uh, like I said, and then we can go outdoor trail riding for the full day, if you like, and never cross the same path. So uh, pretty unique, this sort of area, and beautiful part of the countryside. After just one day on the bikes, riders who've never seen mud before, okay, I might be exaggerating. Good. But they were sliding bikes around like they've been at it for years. Everyone improved, everyone was exhausted. More time on the bikes was available at the end of the day, but the call of helping the ex-world superbike champion empty a few crates of beer was just too great for us. If you're tempted to give off-roading a try, then a couple of days at Wilden could be a damn good place to start. It's got to be better than borrowing your mate's motocross bike and getting fired off into the nearest emergency ward the first time you try. Today, second day of the course, uh, we went out trail riding this morning, which was just ridiculous. Um, if, I, if you'd asked me to do it yesterday, I would have died. I'm, I think actually I would have literally died, but I would certainly have been petrified. Um, we just learnt so much yesterday, going out and doing it this morning, no, no real, you know, it started off gently and got more and more progressively challenging, and it was great, fantastic. And then come in, nice lunch, and then um, spend the afternoon doing sort of Jim Carner stuff with Troy climbing up stupid hills and over logs and things like that, which is just, they can learn so much. I cannot believe how much I've learned. <laughs> you know, if you come here and spend a day off road riding, you know, to a lot of people it can seem, you know, that's mud, that's tarmac, they're two different things. How, how exactly does it benefit, do you think? Well, for myself, you know, coming from the dirt side and doing the road, Obviously the bike moving around in slippery conditions, uh, you know, varying in grip. If you can ride in those sort of conditions, you get on a road bike and they're a lot more consistent, your confidence goes up and for sure you'll feel more confident as a rider. Yeah. And that's sort of what we're trying to, 
to show these road riders. It's all good to ride with grip, but what do you do when you come to an incident or it's raining? Yeah. Uh, Off-road skills, you know, much slower pace. You do happen to crash, and just fall over and get a bit wet and muddy. So uh, I think that's the main, major benefit of actually learning those sort of bike movements and stuff. Yeah. Throttle control, brake, clutch coverage, and that sort of stuff. It's a single yeah. rut. People don't like it. Yeah. Don't forget, if you need to use your feet and paddle, you car. use them. Okay. okay. Left or right? Pull the decompressor in and Middle. Click Middle. Over the top. Yeah. Sorry. The, it's so one narrow, one your handlebars hit the sides as you go into the outside one. It's, it's the ultimate cliche, isn't it? Oh, riding off road will improve your road riding. And I always thought it was nonsense. Um, and it isn't. It's so true. It's just, I can't say specifically this, this, and this. I just know that I'm going to get back on my GSXR when I get home and I'm just going to be a massively safer road rider and quicker on the track. It's the middle of the range guy that does plenty of riding but really wants to learn a bit more. Probably doesn't feel confident within himself on the track and that's what we try to build up and get your confidence and uh, you know, once you're confident you relax let the bike work and that's the whole, that's, that's what you need to do. For me, the coolest thing about the course, probably, and it sounds awfully big headed, is not, with the level of experience that I've got, trying something and coming in and knowing that I've learned so much and I've improved so much. Because uh, after this length of time it doesn't happen. If anyone gets a chance, do it. Since we had Troy cornered, we thought we'd catch up with him and see what he's been up to in his race and retirement. So Troy, last raced in 2011 was it with BMW World Superbike team? Not racing anymore, what are you up to these days? Yeah, you know, since I pretty much stopped uh, from competition racing, um, more or less become BMW's brand ambassador for motorsports, yeah. for motorcycles. So I go to all their different uh, sporting events that they're at go to races that they are also at the World Superbike Rounds, motor shows, uh, golf tournaments, anywhere where BMW is involved, uh, I get the opportunity to go along and mix with people, meet people, and uh, obviously just promote BMW. So it keeps me busy and you know, doing a little bit of uh, testing and development also with BMW as well with their stock bike. So it keeps me busy, although I'm not getting the same uh, adrenaline out of it being out there racing, no. but I'm getting a good satisfaction out of uh, still being on the bike and, and helping develop the bike to go forward. How about um, sort of a, a comeback to racing? Do you ever think you'd, you'd, you'd get itchy and get back in or do you think it's um, you finished? I think if I was a little bit younger and I, then I stopped, maybe yes. But you know, this year, I turned 41 this year and uh, you know, I've, I've had a long career, you know, 20 years pretty much professionally in World Superbike. And uh, I think if I went back to racing now, I think for sure my wife would leave me. And uh, <laughs> I always said I'd stop racing at 40. And uh, that's pretty much what I've done. You know, I'm happy with what we achieved. And, uh, but happy still to be involved around the paddock and uh, yeah. helping out a manufacturer to, to ultimately win a world championship. So with the BMW Superbike thing, you know, are you involved in their, their road bikes, their race bikes, or both? Or? Uh, a bit of both, actually. Um, you know, this year I didn't do a lot with the race bike. Uh, we've done a lot of work last year and, and got the bike to where we wanted it to start the championship. Yeah. Both Marco and Leon were happy with the bike. Um, as you can see from the results, you know, we almost won the world championship this year. So uh, the plan is for next year, uh, you know, a few bit of testing at the end of this season. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously now they've changed, now it's not a factory team BMW, it's with the Italia team. But I think I'm going to still be involved with those guys. Uh, so the stock bike, for sure, I, I do a lot of track time on a stock bike now doing these instruction days so my feedback back to them after spending three days they take on board uh, with the new HP4 I've done yeah. a fair bit of stuff with that and because it's got telemetry on it they can download it and, and get some feedback from me so I think it's going to help develop the bike really quickly.